Hello, Mr. A. Ring. We are Team Eight. Today we will be presenting on our assignment title Tim Burton and the Other Theory, an hour movie of choice crop spread by Tim Burton. Before I start, let me introduce my team members and myself. I'm Ting Jie, and they are Daphne, Eugenie, Kobe, Sanzi, and CJ. According to the Other Theory, the director is the author of a film and the main source of creativity. In the film, crop spread its success line in the inner world, reflected under the dark surface. It gets rid of the short list of traditional concepts of good and evil and present humanity in a delicate way. The human world corresponds to the hill of chaos, which is also the place where Tim Burton creativity and imagination can best be reflected. The quality of a film director is judged by his works. In theory, a film director can decide everything in the creation of a film scripts, actor, performances, picture sounds, editing, and the music are all related to the director, which can be used to evaluate the quality of the director. But the most important ability of a director is to tell a story. So the quality of the story is the most important reference to evaluate the director's ability. The Busky romance of Tim Burton, satirical animated film Crop Sprite will be, would have gone awry in any director's hand, but only Tim Burton manages the ghost so delicately, the immigration so powerfully, and the, the humor so mosaic. It is a stop-motion animated black comedy that was released on 16 September 2005. It is also known as Tim Burton's Cop Sprite. This film gets Oscar nomination for Best Animated Feature. The synopsis of the story is that Victor and Victoria's families have arranged their marriage. Though they like each other, Victor is nervous about the ceremony. While he's in a forest practicing his lines for the wedding, a tree branches becomes a hand that drags him to the land of the dead. It belongs to Emily, who was murdered after eloping with her love and wants to marry Victor. Victor must get back above ground before Victoria marries the villainous Brachis Bitter. When Victor and Victoria joyfully reunite, Lord Barkis interrupts the festivities to remind them that Victoria is now his wife. Lord Barkis attempts to kill Victor with his sword, but Emily takes the blow herself. She then recognizes Lord Barkis as her former fiancé who murdered her for her dowry and intended the same fate for Victoria. Emily demands he leave. Before he goes, he proposes an insulting mock toast to Emily. He drinks the poison meant for Victor and dies. The dead gleefully drag him underground while he screams in horror. Emily sets Victor free of his vow to marry her. Then, she transforms into a swarm of butterflies which flies away. Let's proceed to talk about how Cobb Sprite and Tim Burton's other films are related to his biographical influences that makes him an author. Since Burton wasn't like everyone else growing up in the suburbs of Burbank, California, he was an outsider for most of his upbringing, as he was often misunderstood. It also gave him the impression that society seeks to suppress anything that makes someone unique. So when Burton was young, he spent a lot of time both drawing and watching horror movies. He enjoyed horror movies where the main characters are misunderstood by the people around them, and was mostly moved by stop-motion animation and German expressionism inspired movies. In his younger age, he experienced bullying in the school too, so he also spent some time hanging around at the graveyard. The corpse part is based on a fairy or folk tale. Burton has said that although he was not a big reader, fairy and folk tales always piqued his interest. He always noticed the darker side of these stories and did not avoid them. Corpse Sprite is a perfect example of that. There is also a depiction of family that do not get along, much like his own relationship with his parents. Lastly, consider the vibrancy of the two worlds he represents in the film. In a quote from his book, Burden on Burden, he describes death as a natural part of life and says he admires cultures that embrace it. He is more amusing in the afterlife, and he does so both to mock the idea of death as such a serious and horrible thing and also because he believes that many people in the living world are not fully living. Tim Burton is famous for his instantly recognizable art style. If I were to ask you what Burton's cartoon characters look like, chances are you'd say they want frizzled hair, big eyes, or bluish features. And we see this approach to detail in Corpse Bride. However, it doesn't just stop there. If you look at other Burton films, you'll notice that most of his characters share the same physical characteristics one way or the other. Likewise, we even see some of his animation styles translated into his live-action films, like in Big Eyes. Tim Burton also has a consistent style for his films, so let's take a look. Corpse Bride has a very dark and gothic style as the director draws inspiration from his upbringing. 
As mentioned earlier, Burton spent most of his childhood hanging out in cemeteries and developed a love for gothic horror films. These elements are all reflected in Corpse Bride and his other films, which people call it as Burtonesque. You can see through the way he dresses his characters in very elaborate gothic outfits that are usually black or dark colors like in Sweeney Todd or Sleepy Hollow. Perhaps you can also attribute it to how most of Burton's films are set in the Victorian era. The location where he set his films are always very bleak, like in the film Corpse Bride where he uses the underworld as one of his main locations, and then a very rundown gothic town for another. These bleak locations are also reflected in Wonkaville and Halloween Town. Besides, he also likes to address darker themes like death and resurrection in Corpse Bride, yet these themes can also be seen in Frankelini and Beetlejuice. Since Burton understands that everyone has two distinct sides to their personality, Corpse Bride features a focus on these contrasting balance. For example, the story of Corpse Bride begins with an arranged marriage between a recently bankrupt Victoria and the wealthy Victor. Other themes that are mentioned in Corpse Bride are the themes of unrequited love and self-acceptance. Emily was left for dead by her undeserving fiancé who only used her for financial gain and didn't reciprocate the feelings. She's been waiting for someone to reciprocate her longing for love and marriage and misinterprets Victor's vow recital as him professing his love. These similar themes again can be seen in other Burton films like Sweeney Todd, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and Alice in Wonderland. Corpse Bride's character designs are unique, and not just for their own sake. They are an essential aspect of the Tim Burton aesthetic. His characters have a naive, whimsical, and childlike quality like Charlie in a Chocolate Factory or Alice from Alice in Wonderland. His protagonists are frequently kind-hearted and innocent in a childlike way. Aside from aesthetic purposes, his characters are also influenced by his personal experience of being misunderstood by others. For instance, when the spirits of the underworld went to the world of the living, the townsfolks immediately assumed that they were there to haunt them without realizing that these spirits were only there to visit their loved ones who are still alive. Similarly, in Edward Scissorhands, when Edward was forced out of his mansion and into town, he was treated poorly by the residents, as they believed him to be cruel and violent when he was the complete opposite. It's not only physical things such as costume design, music, and setting which give off the gloomy air of a burden film, specifically in The Cop's Bride, it's the way he edits his film. First, distinct color contrast can be seen in Cop's Bride. The director's use of colors invokes of unusual fear and excitement. This is important because the film shows the appearance and the things we believe in can be deceiving. In this film, the land of the living is portrayed in a somehow monochromatic color palette where saturated colors are not seen. Instead, the directors used these dull colors to portray how boring and dull life was. On the other hand, we will believe that the underworld is much more cold and barren, but in this film, Burden expresses the underworld as much more exciting and comforting and compared to the land of the living by using vibrant neon colors. The usage of color to contrast its opposite world expresses burden message that appearance and what we believe in can be disciple. Also, the use of contrasting colors serve as a storytelling element to emphasize the differences of tone and mood in both of this world. Additionally, Corpse Bride utilizes lighting to enhance its ambience. Recurrent symbols often show up in Corpse Bride and other burden films. Some of these include graveyard scenes and skeletons. Memento Mori are symbols of the inevitability of death found in art and literature. Typically symbolized by a scar found in paintings, the influence of Memento Mori is found in Corpse Bride and a number of brother films, especially the image of the headless horseman skull in Sleepy Hollow. Similarly, flashbacks are frequently used by Burden to develop the backstories of his protagonist. He often used this technique to convey the family conflicts or tragedies that perhaps contributed to some of the peculiar personality traits in his characters, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Sleepy Hollow and Alice in Wonderland. All of this film consists of flashbacks. However, in Cops Bright, we learn about Emily's backstory of when she was a human through a musical flashback. By the old oak tree, on a dark foggy night at a quarter to three, she was ready to go, but where was he? And then, she waited. And then, there are the shadows. Was it the man? And then, the little heart beat so loud. And, and then, and then, <laughs> baby, baby. Last but not least, let's have a look at the cast and the team of Cost Bright and how they come to be recruiting actors and members for Team Burden's production team. So in Cost Bright, Helena Bonham Carter voiced the character of Amelie the Cops. As for Johnny Depp, he voiced the team character of Victor Van Gogh. Well, it is true that a film is made by a team of professionals. Therefore, it is possible to claim that the director's vision can never be fulfilled. But since Burden collaborated with the talent, and the team who share his vision, he is able to create work that is incredible genius himself. As you can see, Johnny Depp has been in the most of Burden's films other than Cosbride, 
and the same goes as well with Hannah Bonham Cartier. Similarly, Deep Roy, who voiced as General Bone Spot, is also a recruiting actor of Tim Burton. He was last seen portraying as a Oompa Loompa in Tim Burton's movie, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So for his production team, Burton usually collaborated with Danny Robert Altman as a composer. He composed the music of almost all of Burton's movie, including Cosplay, using the director notes as a guide to produce music that reflects Burton's idea of how the film should be. Altman also made a special appearance in Cosplay, voicing the character of Bone Jangle. But all in all, Burton always mentioned that he found his family in his film crew, and he said that it's a wonderful thing to be surrounded by them. With that, this and our presentations of how cost price is an evidence of the author theory. Thank you for listening.